Hi, and welcome to the next video in the Photobug Photography course series. We hope you're enjoying these videos, and thank you for subscribing to our channel. Yeah. In this video, we're going to show you how to use the histogram. No, it's not scary. Actually, it's quite easy to use, a valuable tool, and it will help you ensure that you're getting the correct exposure. Fred, right. uh, you want to explain exactly what well, a histogram is? Sure, sure. Look, the histogram is basically a graph of all the luminance values captured by the camera for any particular image. Well, there you have it. Now you know everything there is to know about the histogram. Uh, Jim, no, I, I don't quite think so. <laughs> okay. Well, it really isn't that difficult to use. Here's an example of a histogram. Uh, the histogram it basically takes all the luminance values, that's the levels of brightness in a photograph scene, and charts them in graph form. Yeah, and the left side of the graph is the darker elements. So that means the right side would be the brighter elements uh, in the captured image, right? It's the dark side. And the dark <laughs> the and the light, light side, side. Yes. yes. Ideally, the values should extend all the way from left to right, with most of the values falling somewhere in between. Yep, that's right. Well, look at this example. This is a histogram graph of an image that's underexposed. Look how the graph is bunched up all the way over on the left, and there's nothing beyond the middle. Just by looking at this graph, you can tell that the scene is several stops underexposed. Right. Well, here's another example. This graph represents a scene that is quite overexposed. Look how the graph goes right up against the right side of the graph which means the values in the scene have oversaturated the sensor, and so they haven't been recorded. Yeah, camera, camera sensor pixels are digital devices that record the amount of light that strikes them as numbers. But they can only record a number up to a certain value, then they cut off. The maximum value is the right side of that graph. Right. And the exposure visual visualization video that we just did represented exposure as a pipe with a valve used to fill the glass with water. The pipe diameter represented the aperture, a glass represented the sensor, and a valve represented the shutter. Yeah, that's right. And if you haven't seen it, you can go back and check that one out. But although it's a good way to think of overall exposure, that analogy is actually a bit flawed in this case. To be more accurate, the sensor would be represented by millions of glasses to be filled, and perhaps the pipe by hundreds of straws through which various amounts of water would flow. In this more accurate analogy, the goal would be to stop when the water flows and fills up any particular glass. Most glasses would be partially full, and some would be nearly empty. Right. And if you plotted a graph of all this water in each glass, mm -hmm. that would be a histogram. Yeah. You got it. However, don't expect that uh, each and every histogram is going to look like a bell-shaped curve, such as the one that I'm going to show here. If you're photographing a scene with a lot of dark values, the histogram will look something like this. If there's a lot of light values, then it's going to look more like this one. But notice, in both of these cases, the lightest values go up to but don't go beyond the right side of the graph, and that's extremely important. Yes, of course it is, Jim, because the histogram is a valuable means to judge the exposure in your captured images. Turning on the histogram is going to be different from camera manufacturer to camera manufacturer. It's going to show differently on each one. Model to model, it may even see some differences. Absolutely. And some inexpensive mm -hmm. cameras may not even have that feature. Please refer to your manual to learn how to turn on histogram in your camera. Yeah, also... If you're using live view or a mirrorless camera, you may be able to view the histogram in real time. It's before you press the shutter. Right. In any case, you can use the histogram to help you uh, make sure that the uh, images that you have have a proper exposure. So let's summarize. Once you take your picture, check the histogram, make sure that the graph goes all the way to the right without going past. If you notice that the graph is climbing up on the right, then you may need to do exposure compensation to reduce the exposure amount. Yeah, because it's overexposing. And if you have a large gap in your graph on the right side, and it stops kind of in the middle, you need to use exposure compensation to increase the exposure. We'll move it more over to the right. This is often referred to as exposing to the right. But be careful. If you're photographing a lot of dark scenes with few highlights, those highlights may be difficult to see in that histogram. No, oh, man, they could be blown out. Mm -hmm. But if you have any questions or comments about what we've just talked about, please 
leave them in the the mess the comments below mm -hmm. and of course always make sure you subscribe to our channel and keep in touch with what we're doing for new things because they're coming up all the time yeah yeah you don't want to miss any of our photo lessons and we've got a lot more to share